well, you know, people have argued over the centuries, is mathematics uh, invented or discovered? You know, if, if it's discovered, that means it's there outside of human thought, and we stumble upon it, and, you know, like we might discover a new star, which was there, but we just haven't seen it before. Or is it invented, meaning that, that it's a construction that once we, we make it like a building, it wasn't there before, and, and now we make it. And, you know, I, 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 I agree with Richard Feynman in this respect. Richard Feynman said that um, ph philosophy of science is to science what ornithology is to birds. <laughs> Not very useful. <laughs> so, so I don't, I don't, you know, I don't think whether mathematics is discovered or was invented is fine for people to. And a lot of but, but for scientists, it doesn't have much relevance. are done through thought experiments, and thought experiments exist in your own consciousness. And if you don't address who is having these thought experiments, it's then an incomplete understanding of the truth. You see, you have to, you have to include yourself in every observation, well, because without you, there is no observation to break. So people who have the inner attitude that I have all the time in the world and are much more relaxed, they have a different biology. And therefore, you know, spiritual traditions teach you how to change your relationship with the experience of time. In meditation, for example, when you go into a deep stillness, time, the experience of time actually stops. And um, that's what we call transcendence. And when that happens, your biological clock actually slows down. And you can see everything slows down, blood pressure, heart rate, etc. So whilst there is the physics explanation of time, there's also the human experience of time. Because we can imagine the future, and we can also recall the past. Uh, we presumably can have a flexible experience of time, and uh, unlike other animals that we presume live only in the present. Deepak, how about you? Life after death? Yes, but um, I have to explain that a little bit. So okay. I do not see life as the opposite of death. I see birth as the opposite of death, and I see life as the continuum of birth and death because uh, anything that's born has to die, and uh, it's vice versa as well because that's the process of transformation. A child dies to become a teenager. A teenager dies to become an adult. So you have to go a little deeper and to say, what is death? And death is actually, in my view, a creative process. Our, our, our cells in the body have to die. In fact, we have a term for it in biology. It's called programmed cellular death or, uh, or apoptosis is the word. And when cells forget to die, that's a cancer cell. A cancer cell has lost the memory of death because it doesn't think literally from you know, a consciousness perspective that it's part of the whole body. It's on an independent journey, independent of the wholeness, which is part of its body. So I see death as a continuum of transformation and evolution. And you have to then say what dies. And what dies is an individual identity that is misperceived as permanent because you're not the same person you were 10 years ago, hopefully. You have a different body, you have a more mature mind, and at some level a different personality. So, you know, you are constantly an ever in a phase of transformation. A caterpillar dies to become a butterfly. And so I see that if you can shift your identity to a deeper level, and I'll have to use a poetic metaphor here, you know, like Rumi, the great Sufi poet, he says, you're not just um, a drop in the ocean, you're the mighty ocean in the drop. So if you can shift your perspective to your larger cosmic identity, then there's no death. I had three amazing miracles all documented in my life. And I was wondering if uh, the gentleman had ever observed a miracle. Um, these miracles were amazing, and, and uh, I have medical records and everything. Um, the one miracle was, uh, the first one was my husband had a vasectomy before we were married, and I had two diseased ovaries. We have four sons. Wow. Uh, the second one was my husband had a brain tumor that dissolved in front of the brain surgeon. And the last one was I, my five-year-old son was hit by a hit-and-run driver, at 55 miles an hour, he was life flighted to Cleveland Hospital, and when I got there, he was comatose, 
and uh, we had him home and healed and without a trace of injury in 72 hours. Well, i got to tell you, Barbara, you are living a chosen life here. I think every day life is a miracle.